Hey y'all, welcome to Remote Viewing Investigations with Jessica. I'm your host, Jessica Jones. We'll be peering through the veil to shed light on mysterious cases from all over the world. We invite you to join us on this magnificent journey through space and time to try to unravel these mysteries. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share this out, and subscribe to Texas Front Porch and to my channel, The Cryptid Huntress on YouTube. You can find us on Odyssey Radio and iHeartRadio and can contact us at Texas Front Porch on Facebook or email us at paracryptidencounters at gmail.com and oracleofthesouth at gmail.com. You can reach us through text at 972-559-0988. If you'd like to support us in what we do here, our Super Chats are open. Thanks and enjoy the show. Hey, y'all. Welcome into Remote Viewing Investigations with Jessica. I'm your host, Jessica Jones. I am so glad you guys are here tonight because we have a very wild remote viewing target tonight. And uh, my normal co-host uh, from Texas Front Porch, they are not going to be here tonight. They are actually presenting at the Alabama Bigfoot Conference this weekend. So I have some very special guest co-hosts with me tonight. Um, and I'm going to bring them up in just a minute, okay? So tonight we are talking about Mel's Hole. All right, save the jokes, y'all. I've heard them all this week, okay? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mel's Hole. Uh, this was this became pretty popular back in the late 1990s uh, through an Art Bell on Coast to Coast AM interview. Okay, somebody called in, and uh, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of history behind. Mel's Hole, because a lot of people have heard about it, but nobody knows for sure what it is, okay? I've remote viewed it. Uh, my co-host tonight has remote viewed it, and we are going to try to get to the bottom of Mel's Hole tonight, <laughs> okay? So on February 21st of 1997, a man who identified himself as Mel Waters appeared as a guest on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. Waters claimed that he owned rural property nine miles west of Ellensburg, Washington, that contained a mysterious hole. According to Waters, the hole had an unknown depth of at least 80,000 feet. He claimed to have measured its depth using fishing line, a weight, and although still nothing had hit the bottom by the time 80,000 feet of line had been dropped down inside of the hole. He also claimed that his neighbor's dead dog had been seen alive sometime after it was thrown into this bottomless pit. After a sheep was lowered into the hole, it was pulled back out dead. And after an on-site autopsy, a large tumor was removed. And it's reported that a living seal-like creature with human eyes crawled out of the tumor and jumped back into the hole. That sounds wild, I know. But hey, we remote viewed it and we got some interesting data from that. So according to Waters, the whole's magical properties prompted U.S. federal agents to seize the land and funded his relocation to Australia. I have remote viewed this whole and have two very special guests here with me tonight. Paranormal researcher Barry Littleton and quantum healer Tanya Braddock, who also remote viewed this anomalous hole with me are here tonight and I'm going to bring Tanya and Barry up. Hi guys. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> hey. Thank, thank you all so much for being good? here. Oh, thank you I'm for having cracking me. up because you said we're getting to the bottom of Mel's hole. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try. I mean, this, this actually was brought to my attention by Barry Littleton. And by the way, Barry, okay. For everyone who's watching tonight, Barry came on the show and, um, and helped me out with the crop circles and the orbs on, on one of my past shows. And, uh, and Barry was able to put it all together, all of my remote viewing data together. And of course, Tanya, was here uh, when we talked about the the Black Pyramid in Alaska. And Tanya, you actually remote viewed that with me that night. So mm -hmm. thank you guys. I really appreciate your expertise. I don't know what I'd do without y'all. Thank you for having <laughs> me. It's good to see you both again. So thank you. You do. Thank yeah. you for audience who has been most kind. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, Barry, okay. So you're the one who suggested this target a while back. And I, and I believe you, you were talking to Tanya about it as well. Tell me a little bit, before we get into our data, tell me a little bit about how you heard about it and how your interest got sparked with this 
whole. <laughs> you know, as, as many, I was a big Art Bell fan and I uh, would listen every night. And it was around 97 one night he had dis discussed, discussed this man that had sent him some information concerning the entire whole and this property. And it was just, he kind of called the guy back and had him live on the air as he did often to several people, but this was fascinating. And after that, it just blew up. And there were certain things that he had said initially concerning that really caught my attention. Like the, uh, the sheep that you just mentioned and also the ice that he had lowered, they'd lowered into the hole and then brought out that the properties that it had and there are various things like that that just and also what he had described as the hole being there for a very long time and him seeing lights coming out of the hole, emitting out of the hole, oh, and man. also seeing things as like uh, thunderbirds around it and various cryptids yeah. around it. So I thought that was really interesting, you know, and what exactly we're dealing with here. So as I think many people took an interest in it and it seemed that it got, after that initial interview, it got just kind of blown out of proportion. He was on our bell maybe three times, but that's why I think it'll be cool. Was the first thing I want to know from you two is of course, is it real? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, you know, I think Tanya and I have both uh, come to the agreement that it is real. And, uh, and we're going to talk about our data in a minute. And it's and Tanya with, with you and I, we we've compared some of our data before tonight's show. And we got a lot of the same information, which was wild. Like you live in Idaho. I'm down here in Georgia. You know, we, we we didn't really talk a whole lot about this beforehand, and yet we came up with the same data. So that is actually a very good sign. Okay, first of all. Uh, so, yeah, Tanya, you did extensive research on this today. I know. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your thoughts before we get into so, it. So, definitely. I had never heard of this hole until Barry shared it with me. He had sent me a message and said, hey, you want to remote view this hole? You know, and I'm like, sure. You know, what is this? Well, <laughs> The irony of it is it's not far from where I live. It's actually in an area near a ranch that we, you know, have a lot of UFO activity that we visit, as well as, um, you know, just a lot of paranormal activity in this certain particular part of Washington state. So, of course, I'm intrigued, you know, by this. And also, weirdly, um, there's a very rare blue crystal in Ellensburg, Washington, as well, exactly in the same town. They say it's super rare. So I just learned that, too. So there's a lot of really weird, unique things going on in Ellensburg, Washington. So the whale um, bone tree. <laughs> I know, I know. And, and you know, I, I told Jessica, this is probably a reason why X-Files was, uh, you know, kind of based out of the state, because there's just a lot yeah. of paranormal activity going on. But um, so Barry had sent me, you know, OK, so I actually remote viewed it before I had really a clue. I, I may have watched a five minute little, you know, kind of spiel about it. And yeah. then I went right in and I re remote viewed it. And then I had watched the two and a half hour program that, you know, Barry had sent to me today. <laughs> and I got pretty versed on it. And it, I was able oh, yeah. to put a lot of points together from what I had viewed and what, you know, what was a part of the program. So it's um, it's fascinating. So do we want to dive into our data, Jessica? Like, yeah. How do we want to start doing this? I mean, yeah. OK, so. I mean, first of all, I just wanted to know if it was real, just like with all my targets, you know, when you're dealing with paranormal stories, paranormal attacks, dogman, Bigfoot, pterosaurs, whatever, you know, I, I like to kind of poke around a little bit, so to speak, to see if it's real. OK, and I immediately did get that this is something that's real. It's the, the guy was telling the truth. OK, on a lot of this, but I was just I think Tanya and I, we, we were both wanting just to to get to, like I said, the bottom of Mel's hole. What what kind of um, anomalous activity is going on there? What is this? Why is there no bottom to it? You know, what's up with this tumor seal? Okay, that was my big thing. <laughs> That's the do. weirdest thing. And I have to say, this is by far the weirdest thing I've ever remote viewed. Well, and I've got to say, Jessica, I also interfaced with that seal, which we can get to at a certain point, and it's <laughs> yeah. been in my consciousness all day long. So, that seal is an interdimensional being and yeah. it, you know, and there's a lot of information that came through specifically from that seal. And I have never really remote viewed to a point where I have felt what I was remote viewing kind of picked up that I was remote viewing it. Like that was very interesting to yeah. me. And then it was open for communication. So we will definitely go into, into that. But I also got that it was organic and I also got that it was man-made. So I'm wondering if it's because the man-made part, it might be the stone that was built around the hold so people don't yeah. fall in. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I got 
I got a little bit of both, you know, so yeah. that was kind of interesting. <laughs> well, I actually picked up that it was natural. This is a natural hole. Okay. It doesn't mean the elements of it aren't man-made. Okay. You know, there's a reason that the government went in and seized this property. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll get into that, you know, down the road a little bit, a little later, you know, I mean, this is probably going to end up being a, a two part series tonight where we're going to take a break at about the 52 minute mark. And then we're going to come back after because there's so much to cover tonight. If, uh, if everybody's cool with that, we'll, we'll probably end up doing that. But yeah, I did get that it was it was natural and it'd been here for Lord knows how long. But the first information I started picking up on it is that it is a wormhole. OK, I immediately picked up interdimensional travel in wormhole there, which I thought was really interesting. So, yeah, did you, did you get up on that? I did. I got multidimensional wormhole in space time continuum is what I had actually <laughs> yeah. gotten. And I got tear in time, which was interesting. Yes. And interesting. I know that, yeah, and you and I both got parallel, parallel reality, uni right? Parallel yeah. universe, absolutely, yep. yeah. <laughs> we both did, and I thought that was interesting because I mean, to, to most people, this is just a hole, you know, it's just a hole in the ground, right? <laughs> um, you know, I also find it interesting that after the government allegedly seized this property, you can't find it on Google Maps now. You know, it's got a, a square over it or, or, or they say that it's covered by one lonely cloud on Google Earth. Um, I actually did. I, I believe this either this is a picture of where the hole is or this is an example of what they've done. OK, um, you know, when you go to search the area of Mel's hole, it's covered. OK, you know, that, and that goes all the way back to 1997 because I had a friend that was actually on the Internet back then. Not everybody was, you know, and he was on Google, he looked it up for me that night and it was all like blotted out, something like that. You couldn't, you couldn't see that area of the Google. So that's been like forever. That part is weird like that. So, so you know, another there. interesting fact is that there's a second hole in Nevada and they also said that that one is blacked out similarly to the one in Ellensburg and it's mm -hmm. in Northern Nevada. And I didn't get a chance to get on Google earth to look, but Mel on that show had said that at the time in 1997, that it was actually blacked out. I think they called it Terraform or there was something that it was called back then. Google Earth had a different name, Terra Earth or something. I can't remember, yeah. <laughs> but that's what he was talking about. So that's interesting that both of them were blocked out. <laughs> it is. Well, it just shows you there, there's something being hidden. Now, you know, it must be something that's important or something extremely anomalous, you know, uh, but it's something that we're not meant to see. You know what? Another one that I, that came to mind was, you know, the is it the North Pole in Antarctica or whatever? Yeah. There's, you know, they have that covered up as well. There's allegedly a hole there that you can't see. Now, I also find it interesting that there's actually there's not a hole, a, a picture of the actual hole anywhere. Am I correct, Mary? Because when I was trying to find a, a picture for my social media presentation, I just had to find sinkholes. OK, <laughs> pictures of, of sink like this one right here is used pretty often when people are describing the hole. But that's not actually Mel's hole, from what I understand. No, no. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never seen a picture of it either. Even yeah, though seen, on YouTube, it's got people saying, oh, we're going to go up there and they go traveling. And I never see anything kind of like, you know, Josh Gates. He's never really see any of those creatures. But that's all right. Exactly. <laughs> like and I it seems like a big hole. I think the way he explained it was like nine nine foot in diameter. It, at least that's what I had picked up on. And then it had like a a three foot, you know, kind of stone, you know, kind of barrier around it or border. Yeah, the kind of stone thing. Yeah. Now is, mm -hmm. is that is that is that the crystal that you are referring to the the rim, around the rim or is it something different there? No, I w was watching something else randomly about Ellensburg, Washington, and there was a woman who has land kind of near where the hole is, and she lets people come on for five dollars to look for. It's called they're called blues. Blues is what they call these crystals, and she said they're rare and very only in the area, like only in her area. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, That's interesting. it makes you wonder what's in that land there. You know, what, what what's what's down there? What's in the soil? You know, mm -hmm. something different, something different. Yeah. I mean, I was also, Tanya, picking up um, a conversion of space and time and um, convergence. And I mean, just just the wormhole was like the big thing was that this is I mean, OK, so there's the claim that someone threw their dead dog down the hole. Yes. OK, mm -hmm. and that's pretty it's kind of unpleasant to think about that. But. They just tossed their dead dog down this hole. Well, the, the the neighbor claimed to have seen the dog, you know, a couple of years later or sometime later. 
you know, wandering around with the same collar on, okay, and, and the metal tag hanging off and everything, but he vividly remembers throwing the dog down the hole dead, okay? So, so you know, yeah. well. <laughs> did, did, did you happen to hear the part where I remember him talking about finding these dimes that were never minted? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. almost got like a Mandela effect kind of thing going. And here's oh, another interesting thing that Tanya and I both got in our remote viewing data, CERN, yep. hydrogen colliders. Collider okay. technology. Mm -hmm. Yes. We both yeah. got that. But the weird thing in Mel's description of that guy seeing the dog. So the guy went out hunting and he said he saw the dog, but it looked like the dog was walking next to someone hunting. It's so it was almost like it looked like an interdimensional, like a dimensional paradigm, the way that he explained it. So it's like, did he really see the dog in physical form or was it just a, a hologram, you know, or, a hologram or maybe Mandela? Dog, right. It could have been the Mandela effect, too. You know, like some of us remember Mandela <laughs> passing away and some of us he's still alive today. So, you, you know, what I, what I want to do when we get done, when you get done presenting all your data is I'll present what I think this whole is, what I've always thought it was and how it kind of ties into this. It's very fascinating. And I'll base that on some of my experiences too, because they tie in in a way, you know, some of these things aren't always the separate things that we want them to be, at least for me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not cookie cool. cutter. So I'm not gonna say much while you, while you all are talking, because I think this is fascinating. So. It is so yeah. fascinating. And there's so many, you should see my notes. I have so much information, but so the coin, yeah. he talked about Mel had created these special belt buckles mm -hmm. and he found 10 of the coins in a certain um, like a Chinese little bag or, you know, he explained some little bag that he found and he made 10 belt buckles and he had one himself. OK, that he wore every day and he sold these belt buckles at farmers markets and local places in, you know, in Ellensburg. Well, after, okay, so we should probably tell the story of how, you know, once the government, once Mel went on Art Bell's show and shared all of this information about the hole, the government seized his property, right? So we yep. should probably talk a little bit about that aspect of the story, because that in itself is a little shady, I have to say. It is. Yeah, well, the government is completely involved in this, completely. It's yet another government conspiracy cover-up, okay? This is uh, as the case with a lot of these targets that I do, okay? But yeah, the, the government found out that, you know, I, I don't know if they knew it was there all along or just the fact that he went public, OK, exactly. that was probably the problem. He, he probably shouldn't have gone public with this. But I also heard on one of those interviews, because I was listening to one of them today, right before we went on air. Um, I believe he he went public so that he he didn't disappear, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can understand it, that. it sounded like he had gone public to put it out there just in case something happened to him. And maybe it'd be less likely that he would be disappeared. OK, uh -huh. yeah. so it's like. So he went public and he said on the Art Bell show, literally the next day, he went, he left to go run errands or do something. He comes back and the government will not let him on his property. They're like, an airplane crashed here and you can't, you know, you can't come on your property or whatever. So he's just like, what? This is my land, you know? So somehow he coordinated a deal with the government that they would lease the property from him for like $250,000 a month or something crazy. And Half a quarter million dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. And so what Art did, he loved wombat. So he took off and went to Australia and he started a wombat rescue with all of the <laughs> ungodly amounts of money that he was, he was getting, but he should have just I'm, stayed there. He should have just stayed there. What, what, happened? what happened? He didn't do that. He came back to help his niece or nephew move in Seattle or something. And then that's when things got weird. He, he remembers them moving. And then the next thing, you know, he's in a, in a van or something. And then he doesn't remember anything else until the next, the next day he's in it, you know, he's in downtown Seattle, he's missing his teeth. He, you know, he's homeless on the side, you know, on the side of downtown, what looked like he had been beaten up a little bit. And, um, but the weird thing is they took his belt buckle. They took his belt buckle with that 1943 coin built into it. And he was so upset about that. Why did they take my belt buckle? <laughs> so he was trying to figure, you know, figure all that out. Well, oddly enough, he went back to Ellensburg and found someone who had bought one of the other nine belt buckles that he had created. And he took it to a coin dealer and the dealer said, I've never seen this before. <laughs> like this isn't, 
This isn't something we've had in our time. I think it was Teddy Roosevelt or some someone was on it. Nineteen forty three. Yeah. Just I mean, maybe you know Barry. I can't remember, but um, it was it was a forty three point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was super super interesting. But then I guess. As the story goes on, okay, so he his land is confiscated. He was going through a horrible divorce with his wife and, you know, all these crazy things were going on in his life. And he gets a call from the these people in Nevada, okay, that have a similar hole to, to, to his hole, <laughs> right? Two, and so, two of the same holes, yes. Two of the same holes. And so he goes similar. to Nevada because he's kind of booted off of his land. And he ends up doing a lot of research, which he had done research at his hole too. Like you said, he would lowered lifesavers or something uh -huh. on some fishing line to see if it would melt, if there was water down there, you know. Um, but I think he said he lowered it like 80,000 feet and it still was too deep, right? Yeah, well, he still had more to go, but that was exactly. as much line as he had before he basically got kicked off the land, right? Or just couldn't do it anymore. That's a lot. How many miles is that? I'm just curious. I know it. And I haven't done the math. It's a hole like this. Like who in their life, you know, it's like one hole, let alone, but now there's a second <laughs> hole that he's being guided to, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So these people, it, it's on public land. The one, the one in Nevada, he said is on public land. And there's the people they are called the Basque, the Basque mm -hmm. people. And, um, they and asked him to come down the elders Hold there. Up. That's what they look like. Yep. The elders asked him to come down because they wanted to learn. They wanted to do some experiments. <laughs> and um, they probably so, were not dressed like that when they came to the hole, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no idea. But he explained that they're fearless. Very ceremonial dress. They're fearless but, yes. people. One of them wanted to jump in the hole. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, suicidal. I mean, that had to have been suicidal. Um, totally. To want to do that. Yeah. And so I think where we're a little fuzzy is, okay, so they lowered. Now, I'm not sure if they lowered ice into the Nevada hole or the Washington hole. We're a little fuzzy on this, you know, what, which yeah. hole, whatever. But either way. Ice was was in a bucket and they dropped it into the hole, right? When mm -hmm. they brought it back up, the ice looked appeared as if it was on fire. And it, but he said when you touched it, it wasn't hot. He said it appeared that it was on fire, but it it, it kind of gave off a heat. A glowing, well, yeah. yeah. Do you a know white. anything about that, Barry? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll tell you when he described it. One property wise, to my lim limited knowledge, it sounds a lot like liquid nitrogen. Okay, so the properties yeah. he described, and when I immediately when I heard him describing it, I started seeing really the Admiral Bird story and several others that call the sun inside the inner earth the smoky god. Ooh. And you know what I know of that um, actually, I've been shown by my experiences that actually the inner earth is contains what's called the um, deep biosphere. Science has shown that. Which is where a lot of the deep, where, where like 99%, 95% of the Earth's bacteria undiscovered is. Okay. And then the other thing would be that um, there would be these chambers and there would have to be lighting sources. So is the smoking God that. But the way he described that ice and the, the properties it had, and then it melting down one of those gentlemen's, one of his team members, uh, mm -hmm. the stove when they, they try to use it as a power source and it worked and it went through the stove right through the ground and took down the whole cabin right yeah so, yeah, so yeah. That's, that's, that's very interesting in terms that it seemed to have liquid nitrogen properties but also sounded a lot like the smoky god thing that we hear about on inner earth and you know um we'll talk about this later but when i think going in towards the inner earth really how it's structured the earth truly is scientifically I think you're dealing with so many dimensional forces that um, we'll, we'll talk about that. Go ahead. There's I'll, a I'll, lot I'll, of different I'll, dimensions there. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I want to thank Dave Scott really quick for that super chat. Thank you, Dave. And I, I do not have Jessica six toes on each foot. <laughs> I don't, I, I have not shown my feet publicly, but I do not have six toes on each foot. I have five, but thank you. I will take the super. Thank you, Dave. You were awesome. You guys join me this weekend on Space Out Radio. I do have a show there. In case anyone was not aware of that. So, yes, I'll be there tomorrow night <laughs> and Sunday. Tanya, you'll be there with me on Sunday. You're, you're my guest. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get back to uh, Mel's hole, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Mel's hole. Mel's let's hole. Get back, let's get back to digging in this hole. hole. <laughs> digging ourselves into a hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Oh, this is funny. Oh, man, this is too so, funny. Okay, so as the story continues, <laughs> you know, and we talked about the guy, he took, I can't believe the guy took a portion of that ice and took it to his home. I, I just, I just can't imagine doing that. Who knows what, if there's radiation, I have no idea. But, oh, the Nevada hole, they said that they looked at it like a spiritual site, the Basque people. They would go there and they could put their, in the winter, they could put their sleeping bag, they could be in their sleeping bag and put their feet up against it and it would keep them warm all night long. Because yeah. in the Nevada hole, there's some sort of material that looks like metal. However, Mel said when he was messing around or something, he dropped a wrench on it. It made no noise. It did not sound like metal. It did not. So it, it could be some extraterrestrial material. I do not know. But you can look down in that hole and as far as the eye can see that that metal kind of uh, rim or barrier mm -hmm. goes all the way down. He said it's about mm -hmm. it's the same size hole, nine foot. Or so but the metal barrier is about three foot in diameter, you know, wide or all the way around it. Um, so but they would sit up against it. Now, what this is what I was questioning. The people would lay up against it. However, animals wanted nothing to do with this hole. They they would they they freaked out. His dogs. <laughs> Barry, Dave, Dave Scott wants you to know you have a gorgeous James Earl Jones voice. Okay. Just so you know. Oh man, thank you. That's a <laughs> you cool do. thing. Barry, you well, do. Well, you yeah. Barry, you say Luke, I am your father. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Calrissian, Calrissian, you know, yeah, that's that's really or, cool. Or Mandela effect is now, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Mel's hole. Okay, here we <laughs> So yes, this hole, this is what was very strange, is they the way they explained it, when they tried to put the sheep in the hole, it started to make these noises that were not normal. It was losing it. It was well, terrified. I didn't want to go. It yeah. was in here. It didn't want to go. So one of the Basque people took, sadly, took something and bonked it between the eyes to stun the poor thing. And Mel, you could tell he was kind of torn up about this whole sheep thing. It's like he didn't want to do this, you know. But these Basque people, they, they wanted to know what the heck was in this hole. So they load the sheep up into this crate and they lower it into this hole. Okay. Well, the sheep is screaming and making all these noises. But, oh, weirdly, though, they said once they got the sheep above the hole, they heard nothing. They heard nothing. So the sheep was losing it on the edges of the hole, but, you know, loudly screaming. And then the moment it got above the hole, no sound. So I hmm. thought that was interesting. Hmm? Right? Yeah. So it was sort <laughs> of an energetic asking. wall or something, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It could have been that yeah. wall. I mean, that's what we get when we're out doing Bigfoot research out in the woods sometimes. I feel like I hit an energetic brick wall. And uh, and there's times where you just don't want to keep moving forward because something's saying, don't go, don't go. And, you know, um, I've never I've never screamed and cried and, you know. You know, but stomp why? around and be like, I'm not going, you know. Yeah, why but, were they yeah, you feel it. acting that way? You know, and the people weren't. Infrasound and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Maybe because they're more in tune to that stuff. Yeah. So he says he lowers the sheep down in the hole about half, you know, they get half what they would consider halfway. I don't think they even knew how far it was, but it stops moving. Stops moving. They get down to the end of their, their line and let it sit down there for 30 straight minutes. That seal is down there for, or not the seal, the sheep. The sheep down there <laughs> we haven't gotten minutes. the seal yet. It's, it's coming. The, the tumor <laughs> seal. <laughs> I can't, I, you know, I, I think it's funny. Like we're actually talking about, we've remote viewed a tumor seal, everyone. So <laughs> we're getting, we're about to get to it. Hold we're on, hold on, get your popcorn. <laughs> Yeah. You know, of the data that you sent me, I found that one of the most interesting things. But we'll, really? we'll talk about that. That's okay, why I'm let's talk about it. Which part? The seal ears. part? The tumor seal. Yeah. yeah? The tumor okay. seal. All right. So, so what happened to the sheep? Let's hear okay, it. Okay. So the sheep. So 30 <laughs> minutes down there, and then they pull the sheep up. The sheep is dead. Okay. But it looks normal. It just looks like maybe it died in a field. Okay. It just looks normal. Well, these Basque people are just relentless, you know. So they... He, they put it on a table and they start to cut it open. And what they recognize is that the inside of the sheep looks like it was fried. Like the skin looks like it was just burned from the inside out, like just scorched. Like radiation or something, maybe I microwave. Yeah. Microwave. Maybe that's why the sheep was maybe. screaming. You know, yeah. it was being cooked from the inside out, which is a terrible oh, thought. Horrible. terrible thought. I'm sending that sheep some love, man. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. And so he opens it up and then this is where he finds the tumor and it's huge. It fills the entire cavity 
of the sheep. Like it's, it's humongous. And so they, they pull this thing out and then they're, they're chopping into it. And they said the way he explained it, it was really tough. It was really tough to cut through this tumor thing, you know, well, as they cut through it, this creature (laughs) comes out, which they explain looks like a seal with human eyes. And it has some sort of like an umbilical cord type deal to this tumor thing. Okay. So when it comes out, it's almost like it's a, ta- like a womb, like, I don't know, like attached. Yeah. Like <laughs> right? a fetus, right? Or a fetus. Kind of yeah. like a fetus. Let's see. And, yeah. There's <laughs> something similar. I mean, I know it's, I know you guys, this is weird. I know it's, I know it's weird. Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. When I remote viewed this, I actually was getting, you know, the alien chest buster from the movie aliens. And I, you know, I actually have a picture of that too, but this is not, I just got the whole, the whole thing of <laughs> this you know, is terrible. It's, you, I mean, you know, I, you know, we're joking, but that's kind of what you know, I was you getting. Put that in the data. And I thought I, I found that very interesting. Why? And are you familiar with the Himenes or the Ikimans? Mm. They're a genesis of wasp that inject their larva into the um, live prey, like Ooh. caterpillars. In yeah, the it needed a host body. Caterpillar. That was my data. When the larva mm-hmm. emerges, it has a living host already. It, it so needed, that's exactly what I got in my data. We're looking at interdimensional forces there, and that thing was left there long enough for that. And not to mention the radiation and certain things, you know, certain things that can almost correlate that to, you know, David Paletti's has several of those books. And one of them is um, uh, water, water deaths. And the people that have been pulled out of there, once they actually did autopsies on them, they found the chemical tests. They found it was missed at first is that a lot of them had a type of GHB in their system that was like 25, 50 times you get at a club. Now, where, so they actually weren't dead before they hit the water. They drowned. They couldn't swim. They're atrophied. Uh Interesting. You know, know, things like that. Like, what? that that almost sounds like a type of laboratory or something when you have dimensions that cross, intersect for a second, and whether it's these orbs or whatever it is. But anyway, it's just very fascinating to me when, when, when you said that. You know, when you're thinking about actually who would have done that and implanted that tumor within that seal whether it be biological mm-hmm. or a group of beings doing it as an experiment. It, 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 it's, it's, it's stifling the mind. So I'll, I'll be quiet. Now. Please keep going. Man. No, that's interesting. <laughs> no, please interject. Every time we have something that, that rings a bell, please. Cause we're just going with it, Barry. And I know you, you have a lot of the science yeah. behind what we're talking about because we're just you putting know, the I data thought, out there. <laughs> yeah, and I found it interesting that he had said that, that seal, you know, they wanted to kill it at first, but they couldn't because of the vibration coming off it, I guess. And then it jumped in the hole and that it come to bass, say it returns sometimes and it communicates with them on the AM frequency of radios. Ooh, which is yeah. interesting because yeah. Tanya uh, has been having communication with yeah, this. Yeah, I think man. that seal's moving in with me because he's, <laughs> he's been hanging out with me just a little bit too much this last couple of days. But she's been know, getting I, infer- like is communicating with Tanya. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the deep mind probe is kind of stick- stuck with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I had the sage. I was like, all right, I'm going to cleanse this energy because I don't, you know, I, so. You know, I feel like it's that sheep was like on us now. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that. <laughs> not my reality, guys. Not my reality. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, maybe so, maybe it'll be more cute. Maybe it'll be more like yeah, this I'm popping out of that. you. I don't know. I think I had a stuffed animal that looked like that when I was a kid. Like a wuzzle. It's the eyes. It's a wuzzle. It's the eyes. Well, it's they the eyes. That, you know. It's like that, that sheep was like a sacrificial lamb. I mean, it's getting all biblical it here. You know, I mean, that poor thing was dropped down there to bring up this, this being. And what, what Mel went into a little bit of detail about that be that seal creature was out of the tumor. And then Mel picked it up and put it on the ground. Like Mel actually touched it. And he said, He had some slime on his fingers and he smelled it and it smelled like ozone. So that's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And he said that that seal was there for a couple of hours and it was scanning each and every one of the people there. And Mel felt this tremendous amount of compassion. He was just like, 
the love that was being exuded from this being was overwhelming. Cause like you said, Barry, they wanted to kill it at first, but then they realized we can't, there's something about the eyes and the vibrational frequency that was being admitted from this creature. And then I guess over time, oh, go ahead, Barry. <laughs> Are you aware that the seal came back and told the bass people to be very careful about that ice, that that ice could destroy our planet? Mm -hmm. Yes, I and Jessica that. picked up on that. I picked up, I did. I did. I was getting a uh, ruination and then I got ruin a nation. Okay. So it was something that could destroy our planet. Okay. So yeah, something very serious. I mean, I was even picking up me personally, I was picking up on uh hell and the devil and uh very like evil things going on and evil energies down there. So, you know. Who's to say? I mean, I, I don't know. I know not everybody believes in the devil. You know, I do believe there's evil out there. But I was also picking up on uh, Nazi projects like po Project Paperclip had something to do with all of this as well. So um, Nazi programs and Hitler even I picked up on. So, yeah, so I was picking up on a sinister you, side. On the data you wrote regarding the seal, you wrote a chimera. Chimera. That's right. That was one of the oh, first things did. I wrote. That's I right. did. I did. Actually, I think on two of my targets are chimeras. Elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. Well, let me find it. Chimera, that was the first thing, actually, that I picked up on the tumor seal. <laughs> so, um, you know, chimeras are just a mix between two different beings, right? I mean, you know, Dogman is a chimera and, you know, or a wolf man or whatever. Or even Bigfoot could be a chimera. I don't know. You know, the ancient Egyptians were worshiping chimeras. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, that was the first uh, bit of data that I, I picked up on was that it was a chimera. So is it a human in a seal? It, it, it has human eyes. It has human I don't know. It, it could be. I mean, I didn't pick up. I, I picked up that it was alien. Now, alien does not mean it's from outer space. It means that it's not indigenous to our planet, right? I mean, it's something that's not supposed to really be here, um, in my opinion. Uh, but it, it, yeah, it just... Whatever it was, it needed a host body, okay, to to show up in our reality up here, outside yeah. of the hole. <laughs> yeah. And another really weird thing is that Art said, now this is strange. He said that after he found himself homeless, he went to the doctor to get his face and his teeth and all that taken care of. And they found out he had esophageal cancer stage four, I believe. Ooh. And he said after he handled the seal and had that entire experience, Within a week, his cancer was gone. So he he attributes the tumor, uh, you know, of the seal or whatever, or maybe the ozone, because I know ozone can totally heal, you know, too. And he attributes the handling. He's the only one who touched the seal. And he attributes that to some sort of healing of this cancer that he had. Which is really strange to me, because to me, I would think that this thing would be dangerous and full of radiation. And if you touch it, you're going to get cancer and you're going to die probably or something. You know, I, I was getting, well, see, I was getting a much more sinister side to a lot of this hole and the things that are coming out of it. Now you, Tanya, you were kind of getting a more light side to it in a lot of ways. And so I, thought, I felt that was interesting. I think that there's, all, there's always a duality to everything, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Well, and but, another strange thing is one of the Basque elders um, called Art, or not Art, uh, Mel to the side later, and handed him one of the 1943 dimes because he had find the, found the same packet of 10 dimes or 10 coins on his property too, or on that land next to the Nevada mm -hmm. hole. So that was interesting. And you mm -hmm. picked up on Chinese stuff, right, Jessica? I did. Like, you had picked up on some stuff. I did. Yeah, I was they're delivered into Chinese envelopes. You know that? The red no. envelope. The dimes were when they were found. Mel really? said they were in red envelopes uh, for the Chinese. Uh, I think it's the New Year's. Yes. But they were. That, that's what these these oh, coins yeah. were actually in. So sorry. Go ahead. Please talk no, about. Yeah. That. That's a good point, Barry. I forgot about that. <laughs> wow. I, wow. I did not know that. Oh, by the way, y'all. My mother sent me a message. She said that uh, it's five thousand two hundred and eighty miles down. Where that's how much fishing line they put down that hole. Ooh, All good right. to know. I mean, how do you even find that much fishing line? I'm just curious. But he said he was a shark, a professional shark fisherman. Is what he oh, said. Oh, sharks. Okay. 
Kirby Wade, the river monster hunter, he would have had it. <laughs> <laughs> that weird one up in Alaska. I've been watching that Miss Kate, Missing in Alaska show. There's a lot of weird stuff up there. <laughs> we know there's a lot of weird stuff in Alaska. We have, so, we've so, looked into that. So Jessica, what 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 Chinese element were you picking up? Well, I'm trying to find it here. This is one of the last pages. I have three different targets here. By the way, I forgot to upload my last target on Patreon. And by the way, if anyone uh, is interested uh, in all my raw data, just my raw data, I haven't put Tanya's on there. It's just mine. And uh, and I put all of my remote viewing data on my Patreon. It's the Cryptid Huntress. And uh, you can find that in the description box below. And you guys can join that and, uh, and see everything there. I have, I, I will upload my last target right after the show tonight, everybody, I promise. But uh, you have access to all of that because there's a lot of stuff that I don't talk about on air. Sometimes it's a little too juicy and a little too, uh, you know, just, just bad. Some of it's not bad. like this so, isn't juicy enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, but you can see, you can see the full seal tumor data on if you'd like. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was getting, let's see I'll here. Chinese. That seal tumor. <laughs> I was, I was getting, okay. I was getting something to do with like a Chinese space program. Okay. It's a little crazy for me because I don't know anything about Chinese space programs, but it was something to do with, um, this was what target was this? This was the tumor seal. Actually, this is about regarding the tumor seal. Um, I was picking up on some kind of energetics of Chinese programs that they're working on and stuff. So yeah, maybe it's with the chimeras. I don't know. Could be. You know, my YouTube channel, I've got a video about uh, the Chinese space program and the um, dark side of the moon. They sent some things to the dark side of the moon. I've always wondered what all they found. And oh. the thing I've heard about that there is just fascinating. You know. Well, you know, what this is a wormhole. Went, so yeah, what, what if, if she went to the dark side of the moon and what if it, the put it in there? Exactly. I mean, well, it's all speculative, well, but. Well, you know, the thing that I've always about the dark side of the moon, I really became interested in the work of Richard Hoagland, especially back in the nineties, everything he was saying about the shard and um, the, the palace and other things on the dark side of the moon. And cause I had read a book um, by, I believe it was quote unquote Bhagwan Shidi Rajneesh that was about the dark side of the moon. Several of the gurus had said that we incarnate through the dark side of the moon to this thing called the soul catcher this device and that we also return there during the sleep cycle as well. And so, um, you know, things of that nature are very interesting when you start comparing that to scientifically what NASA might be hiding, especially when like the shard and things like that, you know, yeah, they're hiding all sorts and, of stuff. And, and, and someone like John Vavinko, when I interacted with him, he had told me remote views like you two do. And he said that uh, when he looked at the moon, he got a visit told not to do that anymore. Yeah, you, you kind of sometimes will get something that'll, like when I did Dark Pyramid, it blocked me. The, the first time I went in there, it was like, uh -uh. you know, something energetically blocked me and I had to give it 20, 12, 24 hours and then I was able to go back in. So it was really you, you, interesting. You know, I have, I have past life memories concerning something similar to that. And I think when looking at those Dark Pyramids and the infiltration went on as far as fallen ones, unquote, um, check out the new material that's called uh, Vanta Black, V-A-N-T-A -A Black. It's a type of a way that they're using melanin in this product that actually it makes things, it absorbs light like 100%. Ooh. It's called Vanta Black. I've got that on my YouTube channel too, a couple of videos I've done about that. So it's just, you know, when looking at things like that are science that might work, and I thought also that might be what's covering the Black Knight as well. It's just Vanta Black that uh, mysterious near earth object. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, sorry, we're, talking, we're supposed to talk about Mel's hole here. I'm, no, that's it. No, yeah. they're all correlated. <laughs> Richard Hoagland and goodness, let's go back to the, the, the hole. <laughs> yeah, sorry. the hole. I, I, sorry, I go off past the time. I got to look at my notes here to see what else I picked but, up. You know, oddly, these things were all probably connected anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know the whole the whole creature that came out the tumor seal. It it is something that is interdimensional, absolutely. So, um, the the human eyeballs do freak me out a bit about that. But um, but yeah, I mean, if if this hole is some sort of a wormhole, okay, who knows where it goes on the other end? I mean, you know, 
if, if a brave soul decided just to jump down there, are they going to reappear eventually? I mean, is this going to be a parallel universe? Is, is it like when CERN, they turn, I feel like when they turn CERN on, I'm no expert on this, but you know, is that the cause of the Mandela effect? Is that why are we, are we time jumping? Are we going to another dimension? Well, you've, the whole you've, got, world? A lot, you've got a lot of different in the private sector different types of time technology, okay? And it's really, we don't pay attention to that till it's something that enters our home, you know? Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's, uh, it's, it's quite terrifying. And I believe that when you're in the presence of real time technology, whether it's by another species or especially people here on earth that are doing that in the private sector, you start encountering things like the, like, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, what is the, people want to say vertigo, but not vertigo. Um, when you, um, deja vu, sorry, deja, deja vu. vu. Start, oh, yeah. Deja vu is oftentimes a back, a back product, a byproduct of being exposed to some of these time fields. You know, and a lot of people don't know that they're going through that or that, and some of us are sensitive to it. So we've got that on type of these other type of time edits that are happening, along with solar activity solar flares and something I'll be talking about more in videos to come is what's called diffusion regions of the sun, uh, electron diffusion and diffusal re regions, which is actually these doors, these portals that open between the magnetic fields of the earth and the sun at the connecting point. And they open, they say for every so many minutes, these are things you can look up scientifically. Yeah. It's not just me talking woo woo stuff anyway. So, when dealing with that and the type of time edits and these time skips we're seeing and feeling right now, it's very prevalent. And I'll just go ahead and jump into something else, all right, with what I think this is, is one that I believe, you know, it's odd. When I first started hearing about it, like in 97, right after that, they came out with this movie that was Alien versus Predator, the first one. And they first showed that Predator ship orbiting over the Earth and it's shooting down a beam that bores down into the into the earth and they build that pyramid down there. Now, in reality, if you start taking kind of some of the technology that Phil Schneider talked about, these um, nuclear powered boring systems that can bore into the, that make these these tunnels and these cities and all this stuff, these bases underground, you know, I think that that could be factored in, but going back as far as the backs say that these holes existed and the several tribes say, I think we're going something beyond man-made, definitely. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, taking that hole, and I found it fascinating that you kept saying that you find metal around the rim of one of them. There's metal, all this metal going all the way down, or a material like metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think scientifically, what we can start incorporating into this is something called the drag frame. Okay, inertial drag frame, which takes us into time science, like. The earth itself has a drag frame around it, all right? And that starts creating things that are called closed like time-like curves. And that's really where time travel and stuff like that begins. Now, looking at this hole and diving into another, and I sent you some pictures, Jessica, of another mm -hmm. type of um, time science. It's called by a guy named Frank Tipler, a Tipler cylinder. And what the Tipler cylinder is, is something that rotates around inertial drag frame to create time-like curves. And that's exactly what this thing could very well be doing. And it's fascinating when you look at some of the diagrams of the quote unquote black holes or Makos, the middle of them seem to be infinite to a degree, which means if that's something in that hole, that whether it's going down into the inner earth to the bios, deep biosphere or deeper, is that why it never fills up or is things going into another dimension? This is a tipler cylinder it's going to be character. It's going to be kept capable of time travel, tri time field interaction. Okay, and something I'm going to throw in with this too, with my personal experiences. I sent you one of the pictures, Jessica. I've seen. I've been on board yes. ship physically Matt, that had these big eggs. I call them eggs. That's the way they were shaped, but they appeared to be glass on the front and a type of metal on the back, and then there were these things going into this organic wall. But inside of this these eggs were these different types of lights, like different lights. Some of them looked like they were plasma. Some of them looked like they were uh, 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 bit light, um, energized light, things of that nature. Okay, different, these, these things. At first I thought that they must be power sources, 
I found out later that actually these were beings, entities, and in, in some non-corporeal crew members in these eggs. Actually, I think maybe command system. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, All right. Maybe even actually, oh, that was done for me by Kasara. Uh, those lights there would have been actually their beings, non-corporeal, non-physical crew members, which might be like, you know, your command officers for all I know. Because oftentimes the beings that you see around that look like this being named Mana and they had these eggs, these heads that were reverse brains on the outside. So they kind of looked to me like brain coral as far as Earth goes. Anyway, but um, but these were actually, okay, what these were, when dealing with this ship, this is a ship that was also capable of going from one universe to another. And when mm -hmm. dealing with the universes, we're dealing with shapes. And the shape of this universe is based on the spin and on the spear, okay? Everything here is like that. Even the planets and the galaxies, they're all shaped like that, okay? So that's one thing to note. So when dealing with a path of coherency from one universe to this one another universe may be based on the on the on you know on the pyramid on amorph amorphous metals all the different ancient shapes we know about geometrically it's it's endless so it could be a universe shaped on that so the path of most coherency to this one would be something that's circular oval mm -hmm. what i was looking at at these eggs was a path of most path the most most coherency from one universe to this one so wow. i was looking at mel's whole like whole like is that possibly the same thing entwined there and does it stop at just the tip the tippler cylinder so and when mm -hmm. we're dealing with going down into the earth anyway the amount the immense tectonic plate stress and these things i think also cause dimensional interactions dimensional convergence yeah. yeah i was picking up on that in my data yeah you yeah. know okay you guys yeah. very we're, we're gonna have to actually continue this conversation after the break okay so for anyone who would like to join us on the other side which i hope everybody does call your friends call your parents we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go there we got more to we're talk diving about into that seal we're diving <laughs> we're diving into mel's hole okay on the other side <laughs> <laughs> We're going deeper. But for all of our um, Odyssey and iHeartRadio listeners, thank you all so much for being here. Please join us on the other side. Uh, go to the Cryptid Huntress on YouTube and you can find us live there. Uh, and Texas Front Porch will be there and my Facebook page, the Cryptid Huntress. So you guys go join us there. And, uh, and so, yeah, um, the guys from Texas Front Porch will be back next week. They're in Alabama. If anybody is in Alabama and Oxford, you guys join them at the Alabama Bigfoot Conference tomorrow. Okay. And we will be back in five minutes. You guys don't go anywhere. We'll see you on the other side in Mel's Hole. The other side of Mel's Hole. <laughs> Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes.
Three minutes, we're almost there. Two minute warning guys, two minute warning. One minute, one minute. Well, hey, y'all, we are back on the second side of um, remote viewing Mills hole. All right. And like I said, keep the jokes, keep the jokes out of it, y'all. Well, you know, this, uh, this has been a really fun show so far. And thank you all so much for sticking with us and coming back. I'm going to bring my co-host back up. Uh, I have Tanya and Barry here tonight. And, uh, and we are having a lot of fun talking about Mills hole. All right. So. We were getting pretty deep, Barry. All right, when when we left <laughs> on the first side, right? <laughs> I know. I said save the jokes for later, but here I am with a bunch of jokes. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I got a little excited there. Sorry, so I was going on and you know, tripping. It was out. awesome. No, oh, I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, we were talking about the geometry of it and, and you know, the egg shapes and the spheres and, and in opposition to square universes and things like that. You know, you and I actually talked about that when we were talking about the black cube, the portal that my team experienced out in the field doing Bigfoot and paranormal field research. We had a portal that showed up out of nowhere in our research field. And, uh, and so I, I brought you on my show, Barry. We, we got pretty extensively into the, the cube phenomenon. So, And, you I, know, again, the cube is a way of, you know, what we're dealing with here is transporting materials from one dimension or one universe to another. So what really is entailed in that? You know, and one of the shapes that can be done in is the cube. And it's been showed how mathematically cubes can also contain consciousness, which is life yeah. energy or orgone energy. It could be, you know, orgone boxes, all that within a cube. So when dealing with that in a different dimension and 
uh, you know, it's interesting. It, get, it gets really, really, really hairy. Is that a universe that's based on the cube instead of the spin? You know, because I mean? that's what not what we're used to. We're used to the sphere, and a lot oh, of people. Oh, that's just going to blow those flat earthers right out exactly. of the Exactly. I was no, about to, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. Now, what about, you know, a lot of people don't believe that the earth is even a sphere. They think it's flat. So where does that all fit in? I mean, now we're talking about it. Make it make cube. sense. You know, you know that, that, that's a can of, of worms I don't really want to get into, but I will say this. And people are very, um, very passionate about that. that. All I'll say is that I think the educational system has failed us to a degree. <laughs> People don't want to really look at the data. And what we just talked about, frame drag, that occurs with spears. So why does why does that happen? If there's no drag frame, why did all those satellites go off? That's been actually recorded. You know, so things like, you know, I stay out of that. Eh? People want to say it's flat. I'm looking for the Nikes that make me are totally flat, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm justified, so... Funny how science does that. Anyway. <laughs> it is. I'm trying to pull up this picture about the frame drag. I think this is frame drag. I'm not sure. Let me let me pull yeah. it up and see. Oh, no, that's this is actually, different. That's, that's a Tipler cylinder. Okay. Which what is this? How they can actually be. So in the case that the hole itself has the metal, which Tanya described, okay, um, it uh, actually is around the, the drag frame. And the hole itself going deep like that into the earth would be creating a drag frame. And it'd just be harnessed with the uh, with the tipler cylinder around it. And there's, they sent you another picture that shows what all a tipler cylinder scientifically is supposed is capable of. And one of them is uh, it does not require exotic materials to do it. So that is another thing, you know, putting that on there and putting that in there. And I'm not saying this is absolutely what it is. But scientifically, somebody that knows a whole lot more than me can tell us. You know what I mean? So um, <clears throat> that, but that, that, that crosses us into not just other dimensions and possibly other universes, but also, you know, also other into time timelines. Time travel and timelines. Yeah, it's a big one for that. So I think that, that in that way, is that what this hole is that we're looking at? And when you say it's a portal, and a wormhole, it fits right into what we're talking about here. A lot of people would think about the Rosen, Rosen, uh, Einstein Rosenberg Bridge, which is always seen as being up, upside and down. But the Tipler cylinder is different, it's vertically like that. So it can also be down, but I think that might be what we're dealing with here. So, nothing else. I don't want to get too many bananas thrown at me, but it's food for thought, right? That's <laughs> interesting. And one of your comments on there, Jessica, one of, your, one of the viewers had mentioned about the show that's on Amazon Prime called yeah. Outer Range. And it's about a hole on someone's property. And the guy gets pushed in the hole. I believe he gets pushed in the hole and he falls in the hole in the beginning. And he, he finds himself on another timeline, like a timeline where he died. And then somehow he ends up back you know, in his regular timeline. And then there's this girl involved, but it's really interesting because the moment Barry sent Mills hole to me, that was the first thing I thought of was that show. And I'm like, you know, is that part of disclosure here? They're kind of putting some of that information out there, but it was, it was really interesting because in that show he's bouncing around timelines, you know, in it specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also too, Barry, you've been out to Western Washington and this hole is in a very interesting location. It's just north of Yakima uh, Indian Reservation, which I've had experiences there, which I will be sharing on Jessica's show Sunday night, uh, Sasquatch type experiences. Oh, and yeah. it's also near Mount Rainier and Mount Adams, which have significant UFO activity, paranormal activity. So it's all in the same vicinity. So it's interesting when I looked at the map, I'm like, wow, this is all kind of in the same similar location. <laughs> yeah, that's, that? a, that's a very interesting place, you know, and that's all the places that uh, Tom Pallet told me he was actually setting up before he realized what a paranormal metaphysical aspect to Sasquatch he was dealing with had. He was doing, you know, things like banging trees and stuff like that. But he talked about being around Mount Rainier a lot and that whole area, you know, seems like definitely a hot spot. And having been out there before, I must say, being from the Midwest, I was somewhat unprepared for the beauty that and the voluptuousness of the mountains out there. But it sure does not easy to it's pretty easy to see how you go deep into some of those forests 
you'll encounter all types of time rifts and uh, squares and cubes and <laughs> portals, everything. Yeah, you have to be careful. You have to be really careful where you go because we've actually documented the portal and the cube. And so we know it's there. We have evidence of it. We've sent you people know, inside Tom, of this. Tom said this to me. He said, Barry, if you ever decide to go deep in the forest, which isn't likely, um, uh, if, hey, you we'll take you. Shimmering, go. if you ever see the shimmering lights, don't walk into them. That's yeah. how people disappear. Oh, interesting. Well, mm -hmm. you can't see the shimmering lights at night usually. Um, and that's when we've experienced the, the cube. Was it late at night? Yeah. So it's it's very important that you always tell everyone where you're at, where you're going, uh, and that you have people with you when you're exploring the woods at night. It's very important. Uh, we I know from experience. So yeah. Yeah, and very there's careful. also in that similar area what are called ice caves. Um, there's a national park there with ice caves, and I was just watching something recently about some of the ice caves up in Alaska and how there's been. Uh, dwarfs or gnomes or these little creatures that look like their face looks like grass or a stump or you know something i think they're called the ice gnomes or something but i'm you know in that whole area it's like gosh there's all of these really strange anomalies in that in the, the whole area of where mel's hole is well in my in my data at, mel's hole has ties to inner earth as well so however that plays in i don't know a whole lot about inner earth but it has come up in couple of my my targets lately uh, in regards to the dog man out in Missouri, uh, you know, and the giant of Kandahar. OK, I talked about that with uh, with D.A. Roberts. I've also talked to with that uh, with Jason um, McLean on his show and on my remote viewing show. Uh, the giant of Kandahar has ties to inner earth. That's where they they live. Well, you, you know, that that that's uh, all the cannibal. All, it's, it's a shame that all the giants, the uh, mountain giants, and even the more humanoid ones, whether it be uh, Paracas, Peru, or wherever, they're always categorized as cannibals. Have you not noticed that? It's kind of yeah. it's kind of a little bit eerie. And when it comes to Sasquatch, you know, whether they're manifested beings or not, maybe did a video on this. I should release it. It's where do they go when they're not around? Period. We don't know. You know, and is there an inner earth factor involved? You know, I had um, I do a lot of hypnotic work. And I have one of my clients has had Sasquatch interaction. And it comes down, you know, it comes out that they're saying uh, they practice manifestation in caves, especially for the children, because people aren't paying attention to caves the most. So they pay it, wow. they, they actually practice manifestation techniques within caves. And that's how they use the cave systems to a degree. Okay. And if you live somewhere wow. like where I do, or like this last thing I was hearing about, in, even not far from a couple states over Nebraska, where there would be nowhere, there should be no Sasquatch in either of these states, but yet there act there's activity. And I found that some of these activity areas are near caves in these states. Yeah. I find that fascinating. So I don't think they live there, but they're utilizing them. And how much of this does tie into the inner earth? Yeah. Well, and then you also, on top of that, you have another layer of our humans doing things, having deep underground military bases. And, uh, and, and, you know, and I'm, I'm dealing with, um, something that I'm going to have on my show tomorrow night with DA Roberts. He's coming on my show after I went on his show on Wednesday and we're talking about, um, the dogman of Joe bald recreation area. And it is tied to, I could not get over every target. I did three targets on the Joe Bald recreation area and they all had underground, an underground facility there. And that is part of the government and has ties to the Pentagon. And, uh, and so we have to factor that stuff in too, because our government is aware of chimeras and they had something to do with the dog man that's there. And um, so you got to add it. All this is all connected and it's, it's way bigger than we can ever imagine. So it definitely yeah. is. And so are we ready to dive into the seal and the seal of communication? Yeah. Please. Yeah. I, the, the tumor seal. We, we promised our audience we would get into the tumor seal some more. So. so Barry, right before we broke, you were talking about plasma and I kept getting plasma pool kept coming up in this, this hole. Yeah. I and also so got plasma as well. She got plasma somebody. as well. Yeah. And so I wrote down, um, Emerald green, illuminescent, aurora, electromagnetic, and electrons. Those were the those were the key words that I had 
had written down about this hole or when I started to focus on the seal, really, it was kind of the seal and the hole kind of target. So, you know, I, I, I did my remote view and then I kind of stepped away and then I was feeling this tug to come back and sit down and just start writing again. And that's when the seal started to interface with me, almost similarly to mind speak, like you and I, Barry, have experienced, and I'm sure Jessica too, mm -hmm. with the Sasquatch. Like, it's like this pull of something is communicating and you, and this happens to me sometimes with channeling. I'll wake up at three in the morning and I just start drawing light language and different, you know, different things. And so the seal was kind of drawing me back to start. It wanted to communicate with me. And I'm like, whoa, this is kind of interesting. So I had um, asked it specifically, like, you know, what are you? You know, what do you what you know, what is it? And it told me that it lives off of light and sound and that it lives in a parallel parallel universe. It was a there where it lives was established billions of years prior to earth civilization so it's been there clearly a very 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 long time and um so i kind of said can you explain more to me like ex explain more to me where you live and i immediately got this image of this emerald city in my mind with what looked like the northern lights like and i sent jessica some photos so there's this Emerald City, but it was covered in a moat. It had water all around it. And then it looked like it was illumin like illuminescent around it, almost like the auroras, like this green movement. And it was moving. And at first I was like, is that radiation? But it was explained that no, it was electromag it was electromagnetic, but it was plasma. It was plasma. So oddly enough, I'm watching later on, I'm watching a show, and the show is about plasma it just leads into plasma. And I'm like, no oh, coincidences. So it was very synchronistic. Yeah. So what I learned about this is that plasma. Okay. So there are different states of matter. You've got solid liquid gas and plasma. Okay. So plasma is the most massive amount of energy that, that you can have, I guess, in these states of matter. And it talks about how plasma is one of the strongest conductors of electricity and lightning is a powerful example of plasma or even a nebula, like a nebula when you see them out, you know, in the cosmos. And it says that plasma is a very high frequency energy state and that there are beings that can manifest in the plasma. And that's what you were just talking about. Oh, Similarly wow. with the egg, with the egg prior before we had, we had um, stopped. And it explained that the universe is like roughly 99.999% plasma and the, the plasma can self-organize and it can create sacred geometry and it can hold information. So all wow. of this, I'm just jotting this stuff down like a crazy person. I'm like, this deal was communicating with me through this program. It was just the wildest thing. You know, like I mentioned, all the things are not separate like we often want to think. Taking this and correlating this and directly connecting this to the other show I was on with you ladies, mm -hmm. that would be the crop circles. And yeah. the crop circles, especially the positive ones, have been proven to being exposed, made by those plasma balls, yes. high energy plasma balls. That's right. And the big stalks represent that. And also all the things that would be the microwaves that they've been exposed to, the genes, and then also um, the electron avalanche that occurs with this also, and all these things that actually make the seed of these crop circles uh the, the seed of them so much stronger and yielding more biofuel, more product, more uh, much just better off. And it's, it shows that not just are they showing sacred geometry, like you just said, but also showing us a way to deal with food shortage. That's oh. what the real ones are showing. And I think the message that you got with those, Jessica, I remember you getting yeah. really emotional during that. It was very powerful, powerful and positive. When dealing with things that are coming from the higher frequencies, you know, the higher levels, di sorry, dimensions or whatever we're calling them. You know what I mean? That's very, mm -hmm. very, very important when dealing with this and what actually scientifically has been proved by the circles that were not man-made. Yeah. And, you know, coming back to plasma again, I myself have seen like, you know, those beings were uh, plasma. Some of them were, pl they're different containers for consciousness and plasma is one some of the plasma ships that we see in the atmosphere, you can almost chart what the plasma 
chart what different plasma like metals and they do in our atmosphere there's a chart you'll see what some of those ships are turning the colors that they are when they're energized charged plasma and how oh, plasma wow. the ship itself the living ship and a, a living being you know it can it so that's that kind of takes it to that realm also you know so in that way you have plasma that can be the craft itself as a living organism and also have others there are plasma beings on board it. It takes it to another level, you know. That's wow. really cool. And it the does. thing is, is did that being manifest itself as a seal yeah. because that's what Mel and his team would recognize, right? Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. And I and don't know with emerald, human eyes. That's and if you think of the chakra creepy. system, what is emerald? Emerald is the upper heart. It's mm -hmm. very loving and compassionate and high vibrational and you know and good so luck. <laughs> yeah, luck, all that stuff. So it's like money. <laughs> yeah, abundance, all of that. Right. So it's like, you know, I and I was seeing an inundated green. It was emerald. It was just swirling around. I'm like, wow. what is this? I was almost getting Lemurian vibes a little bit. Like it was just because it just was very interesting how this seal throughout the day was just communicating with me through programs through like sit down and start writing things. Like it just was yeah. really interesting. And it was after I had even disconnected from the remote view. It was like, that's what I think it was like, okay, I I'm coming through, but I noticed it would come through when I was doing something else. I wasn't even focused on this. I was, you know, doing something else. And then that's when the information I was kind of guided to sit down and be like, all right, now the information's coming through. Wow. I think it's really interesting that you have gotten messages it's almost like messages to humanity, just like I did with the crop circles. True. You know, we're 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 channeling information from a higher source, you know, and uh, and we're able to talk about it here. I think we're this well is cool. really special. <laughs> yeah, you this know, is the, pretty cool. You know, the 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 energy, the life energy that I've seen running these craft was um, something that was a very dark golden. Like like I've worked with yellow light, but this is different. It's golden, but it's very deep. And, you know, they had given me a term that first I thought was kind of cheesy, but hey, it is what it is, you know, angelic golden liquid energy. But really what it is is some way that they're polarizing light to a degree that it looks in this. I mean, this light to me was so thick that it was almost like a plasma, but not quite. But when I say thick, it uh, that's so my age, you know. I, I remember this commercial with Mr. Mrs. But Butterworth when I was a kid, and she said, "I I pour real slow," and she's got <laughs> and they show this golden honey over the pancake. Yeah, I mean, but it's really golden. This light is somewhat similar to that, and you can see it in the in the chamber going. You know, it's very fascinating. So in that way, I know that that is something that we would call prana, chi, orgone that they've Life taken the chart mm -hmm. and, you know, somehow polarized even a lot a more degree to use this life energy for not just, you know, propulsion, but for the life of the craft itself. And it shows how the craft is alive much more, you know, even the, the craft I were dealing with were much more sentient than I had given it credit for. You know, we start dealing with things like soul life memories and race memories, how these craft can access some of that. One of the craft I was on can actually choose the universe that has the most co the path that has the most coherency so you're dealing with different portals wormholes which one is choosing to go through that you know it's a whole nother thing going on with real contact that we're not being told that's you know, awesome we're so dealing so busy dealing with the negative stuff we hear which is a problem yeah. but we don't hear this positive stuff we're talking about now coming through at all exactly you know? i have about this hole has been tainted government wise it so, has i i do have a question from the audience tonight whatever happened to mel does anybody yeah, know mel? <laughs> what happened to mel did he go to australia i don't know <laughs> did he I, help I with wombats again <laughs> i honestly don't know what happened to mel i didn't remote view that part i didn't either <laughs> well, say i was just looking at his hole <laughs> be a dirt map <laughs> most likely i thought it was funny they named he might have fallen in the hole called mel's diner i wonder if it's named after him Oh, I don't know. That is an interesting question. I never, I never looked into what happened to Mel. So uh, maybe he went dark. Who knows? Oh, oh, he did say when he dies, he wants to be thrown in the hole. <gasps> I remember hearing that. Yeah. Then maybe walking the earth in another dimension right now or walking somewhere. I don't know. 
Maybe he's here. Right that we just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This is interesting though, with all the, the positive messages that it can or potential have the potential to come through from us remote viewing this, you know. Like I said, I got more of a sinister side of it, and Tanya, you got the more light side of it. So oh, sure. did you get any I appreciate more about it. the seal creature did that we didn't share? Well, let's see here. Let me pull my target out right quick. The tumor very, cell. The tumor how cell. How communicates with the Basque people? Is it similar to the way they it was communicating with me, or does it physically come up the hole and communicate with them? You know, it, what I had heard it, it, it comes out of the hole sometimes, and then it communicates on on the AM frequency of radios. Yeah, uh, I, I need to like work with that. It, it's <laughs> odd. Is what I remember hearing. Anyway, well, so it's look. like. It's like a spirit box or something too. You know, they're able to oh. speak through the frequencies of a of an AM radio or a, a, any kind of stations that are moving quickly. You know, uh, like that. So I don't know. It, it's absolutely an intelligent life form. So I mean, the telepathy is a thing, and you know, I don't know. I didn't dig into the communication side of it very much, but it it's very it is very intelligent. Uh, I got that several times. I wrote down intelligent. I also got a very interesting odor coming off of it as well. And you mentioned that you said that he mm -hmm. Mel said it smelled like ozone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was which was like that smell right after it rains. How you can smell that in the atmosphere? Yeah. Like that's when I notice ozone is just right after it rains. It's that really fresh smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I had a friend who would make ozonated water for me, and my entire place smell like those of my cats were like Whoa! you know like they loved it <laughs> yeah. you know they, they, they said when it came out of the hole the seal and what it's using to communicate on the radio what it was doing was warning them about the ice interesting That's what it seemed to come wow. back wow i will tell you the very last bit of data that i got from it i was seeing slimer from ghostbusters <laughs> okay so i was i was connecting with, with like because well, you know, here's the thing: Slimer's green. He radiates green. He has human eyes. Okay, interesting, right? I know it sounds weird, y'all. I don't know, but I was seeing. I, I actually wrote down Slimer from Ghostbusters, and then I ended my session. I was like, "All right, that's enough. <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> I've had I've enough." Had enough. <laughs> well, you know that, that may be to ectoplasm also. Could be. What was coming off of that thing may have been some type of ectoplasm, but quote unquote healed Mel and what he's smelling the ozone ozone smell that could have been some type of ectoplasm you know that goes all the way to different types all the way to like angel hair and all the other things we've heard about the different phases and densities of ectoplasm food for thought yeah interesting yeah well we have we have several people talking about the Basque people uh you know rain says that they are known to be RH bloodlines Ooh. yeah and also, let's see what else we got here. Some of, okay, Tony says um, some of the chants in the Wiccan witchcraft rituals are thought to have Basque origins. Okay, so. I've never even yeah. heard of the Basque people until I started to look them up because I'm like, I, I don't even know who they are. I didn't even realize they lived in Nevada, some of them. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I did. I, we did go from Wizard of Oz to Ghostbusters. Yes. You, you are right, Rain. I went from Wizard of Oz to Ghostbusters. But you know what? Sometimes that's how remote viewing works. Honestly, um, things will come across and things that I, I can't really interpret it in any other any other way than by what I know. And so what I'm seeing is Ghostbusters, you know, a green slimy thing with human eyes and, and teeth. You know, and I'm, I'm seeing that, that, but that, like I said, that's when I kind of shut the target down because I was like, all right, this has gotten a little weird. Okay. It's already weird. <laughs> like, but, um, but we, but see, we're making making sense of it. Mm -hmm. They communicate already. with us in a way that we can understand it and recognize yes. it. So for me, them showing me an Emerald city and the Northern lights was a way that I could understand, you know, who, who knows if that's what it looks like, but that's the way they communicated it to me that I, my perception took it as, you know? You know, for a long time, it took me a long time to accept that I have a very great memory. And uh, and once I see any type of movie or TV show, I remember every line from every actor. I've got a memory like that. And for me, it was torture as a child because on Cinemax and HBO, they show the same movies like every, you know, there's a big burnout. But I thought that was a curse. But I didn't realize that spirit pulls scenes out of my mind and will flash them to me for a reference like, 
during whatever whatever it is I'm doing. I didn't understand that for a long time. So it's not a curse, it's a blessing. So when you give movie references, I think it's cool. It's good to have a frame of reference for some of the stuff that's so freaking weird. It's so weird, you don't even gotta make up lies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Sometimes that's all we have. I mean, a lot of times when I'll be remote viewing something and I, I, I sometimes I'll give the example of, you know, I was tasked with trying to help locate my friend's missing dog who would run away. And uh, and I, I I'm not I'm not sure if that was a blind target. I can't remember. It's been a while. But um, but I was hearing the dead press song uh, bigger than hip hop. That song um, the, there's a dead Pred song and it was like one thing about music uh, it's something about the wolf cry. Right. And so I wrote, I wrote down all the lyrics on my page and I was like, okay, everything I was hearing, I wrote it down. It turns out it was my friend's missing dog and his name was wolf. Okay. And my data actually helped locate where the dog was and they found the dog eventually. So it was interesting. That's, that's how remote viewing works in case you guys are wondering. That's awesome. It, I think for yeah. me too, I've had the Arcturians come through to me in channelings and stuff, and they speak in analogies. And it's wow. hilarious because I speak, I've spoken analogies my whole life. And so I, I just immediately relate with Arcturians because that's how they communicate. So when I have information coming through, it's usually based off of some sort of an analogy that people would understand. And it really breaks it down to a very simple terms. And I've actually had them tell me, cause I was joking that they're so serious all the time. And they're like, we're not, we're actually not serious. You just don't necessarily get our humor because it's See, so, it's such yeah. a different vibration. <laughs> and that's funny. Like you, that's like a little more like high vibrational. See, I'm just like, I just hear rap music. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I've heard rap music too. <laughs> that's just how it works. That's how it goes. I understand rap music. So, you know, like public interviews, Red DMC. I mean, yeah. Dead press, yes. whatever, you know, Jeezy, I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever comes out, what, however they can convey the message to me, I get it. Okay. Hey, that's, that's how you get it. And you're like, all right, I can, I can understand this. And I can yeah. apply it to something. Yes, Matt Delph. I actually, we've already done all the whole jokes tonight. You missed it. So you should have tuned in earlier. I saw your comment. Thank you, Matt. But yeah. Oh, and by the way, everybody, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am like, 30, not, I, I'm like 20 something away from a thousand subscribers. So please go subscribe to my channel, The Cryptid Huntress. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm so close. <laughs> but um, cool. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, remote viewing. There's there's no rhyme or reason sometimes as to how things are coming to us, but it, it, it is what it is. So uh, sometimes we can uh, figure out what a tumor, a tumor seal <laughs> is by, you know, songs and stuff. I don't know. Ghostbusters. This is so weird. <laughs> this has been the craziest. I want to look at my notes and see if there's anything that we've missed. That so, so how, do you, how do you think it got there in the sheep? Oh, that's a good question. That's that's a great question. I mean, it was a, a host of some. I mean, the sheep was its host. I, I don't know how it got there. And it didn't um, appear to be cut open. Like it just, the sheep looked mm -hmm. normal. So it was like implanted it was supernatural. in there, like hybrid or like, you know. I mean, I did get hybrid. No, you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hybrids in my data for sure. I got, okay, these, these are the first things I wrote down, right? This is what I was sensing. Okay, chimera, eyes, spell, a spell. I don't know where the spell comes in. Maybe it's the... Maybe it's the Basque people with their witchcraft ties. I don't know. I hate to say that because I don't know. I don't know anything about the Basque people, but... If there's chants and stuff that the Wiccans use, who knows? But I got hybrid, tumor, radiation, parallel universe, clot, seal, interdimensional host body, aliens, um, and journey. And I got journey to hell. So that, that poor little sheep went on a journey to hell is all I got to say. Poor thing. Well, and it could be but, who um, knows what's going on down there. You know, I mean, yeah. it could be, you could see both spectrums, you know? Yeah. Maybe the sh maybe the seal came up because they put the ice down there, and the seal. The whole purpose of the seal was to warn them that you're gonna you're gonna destroy the planet if you know with that ice that's on fire. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. I didn't look into it that much. Wasn't the seal before the ice though? I mean, I don't know. I thought I thought no, I, I, did I, the I, I, I thought it was lifesavers. Uh. uh Sealed or I sealed in the ice. I thought. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I. I don't. I, they did a ton of experience experiments. That's all that I know. I think 
I don't know. I think to me they did the seal. They did the sheep last because they didn't really want to do an animal. They talked about throwing a cat down there, and then they talked themselves out of that. <laughs> and then I guess the Basque people were just like, "All right, we're we're sick of this. Now we're going to stick the sheep down there." You know. So I feel like um, I don't know. I it's hard to tell on Mel's story because he kind of does bounce around a lot, and it's hard to tell what the <laughs> timeline is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm, I apologize. I wasn't able to find the first interview because that's the one really that was kind of key. I mean, as far as like seems like what he what he released. But after that, I mean, I, I don't know. It's 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 really interesting. It really is. And I wonder, you know, how much exploitation of this thing has been done. And what we're looking at at both of these holes are they the entries or the exit points? <laughs> That's what she said. I don't know. <laughs> oh. I am like so. Oh, I am so man. intrigued. I Matt Delph, you heard that right? I, Matt's here. He's he's that one of my big foot field research friends. So like y'all know Matt. Hey, yeah, we we yeah, Barry, you know Matt. All right, y'all with those dirty minds. That was let's it. it. That's for one dirty joke. Straighten Sorry. up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dirty jokes about Bell's home. Oh man, come on now. I'm so I kind of want to drive. Barry, you knew this was gonna happen. A five hour drive for me. Like I'm kind of intrigued. Maybe tomorrow I'll take a little road trip. I don't know. You know, I I, I think this is another example though of something that was done with technology when Earth was still a type one civilization. No different than that ore station in the mountain in Iseti I've talked about and these these other Mm -hmm. things that how many of these things from past Type one Earth are still existing and still functioning, you know, all the way to the pyramid. You all remote view. That's another one. All these things, you know, and and I think that when dealing with the energy sources that power these things is massive, also, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I don't know. I the whole thing with 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 the with the with the ice. I found that kind of disturbing also, to be honest. And, you know, I have memories of technology that could convert matter into energy and energy into matter, almost similar to like a transporter, but that these devices in these black pyramids getting the energy of the selfishness in those black pyramids, perverting the energy, which is life energy that ran these devices. And then it started a chain reaction that is similar to talking about movie references to when we look at the never ending story. What was the major nemesis in that movie? The, the nothing. Exactly. And what was it doing? It was dematerializing Fantasia into nothing. Yep. And that's exactly what happened here. And I think that resulted in one of the continents here going up and coming down as rain and sand. And that's where we got the deserts from. Oh, that's what my data says. Actually, it's the void. Okay, it's just a void. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of my data we haven't totally gone, I haven't gone over, but yeah, it's the void. So you know, just throw this in here and I'll shut up. All right, this this is <laughs> no, keep talking. We're good. <laughs> <Long time laughs> <time ago, laughs> I read a book by the poet P. D. Ospinsky, and it was called uh, "Talks with the Devil." And supposedly, it's a channeling of a devil, that, a demon that claims to be millions of years old. Okay, and it Mm -hmm. talked about first thing it's saying is, of course, there's no God, there's no God, but there is an abyss, a void between us and the others that we can't cross. And it could be the end of our like life force if we even try. And then it described, Mm -hmm. it described, quote unquote, Adam and Eve, which I think probably is more the way the Uranta book describes them uh, and Inky and all that, I think, is what who Adam was. But anyway, that's another story. But uh, how he describes how they were trying to attack them and their followers when they were meditating at night and meeting at night, and this pink cloud would come and grab them and take them across the abyss oh. and across the void. Wow! I just I just like comparisons and things like that. I was yeah, trying to yeah. you kept saying the void, and that's what kind of yeah came the to void. Me. It could be the yeah. ruin of a nation, ruination. That was yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And so you know, you mm. think if everybody. All those people took one little piece of that ice and they went off and did something with it. And then it created all these Mel's holes everywhere. We'd end up becoming Swiss cheese earth, right? You'd be coming a void. I mean, there'd be these holes and these portals yeah. and these wormholes all mm-hmm. over the place. If 
people mm-hmm. really started to spread that because it from what it sounded like he went to 7-Eleven and just bought a big old bag of ice and yeah, dumped it yeah, in yeah. Pocket, right <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. that <laughs> so i mean that, right that, that, that i thought was fascinating especially when dealing with what i think was a problem and catastrophic on this planet before i just mentioned and then going back to that ice is something quite similar and it does you know it's a very fragile balance here Hey, Barry, you're a near-death experiencer. Okay, so Bama Bigfoot says that he's heard that hell is cold like ice that burns like fire from near-death experiencers. Have you heard that before? You know, I've heard one or two accounts and one of another person saying that they're being pulled at by these entities forever, like they're pulling them apart. Mm -hmm. But having actually dealt with a couple of hundred now crossing of earthbound spirits that are inside the energy field i've heard a different description of hell you know one telling me uh, well don't don't mention the world god there is no god i ask you why not well because if there was a god we wouldn't all be here almost bumping into each other and you all wouldn't be ignoring us forever oh wow that's kind of sad with this person because nobody listens to me you know, and that and that's saying right there, how many earthbound spirits are there? Like I told you, I was crossed one that said she joined this this woman had joined with the client in the hospital, and she kept saying I was the only one strong enough to do it. The others weren't strong enough. And I said, well, you know, at the end before I crossed them, how many others were in the room? Oh, probably somewhere between 50, 55. That's oh looking at and you worked in the hospital, Tony, so you know. And I mentioned that on your show that so I don't yeah. want to repeat myself much, but that's that's terrifying. That's, that's not even the, that's not even the incubator room. That's just someone getting a surgery, like a heart surgery, whatever it is, on on a table, and you've got mm-hmm. spirits all around. Some trying to help, some wanted yeah. to succeed, some trying to join. You know, some think it's seeing a light in the incubator room, thinking it's a chance to reincarnate. Mm-hmm. They finally saw the light again, but that's not the light that. You know what I mean? They don't see yeah. there's another person there trying to form their energy field. It's, it, it, I don't know what this place is, ladies, but to quote my older brother, it's very hellish here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, don't want it, we don't want to think that like when we die, it's going to be hellish there too, you know, not crossing mm-hmm. over. I mean, well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to hell. <laughs> well, well you know, you know, I, I mean, I kind of term it like this, okay? And this is what another thing I picked up from the Earthbound Spirits. Mm-hmm. And what I, you know, when like you've been asleep for like, if you get a real sleep, you go into REM and even past that deep sleep, you're down for like nine hours or more. When that alarm goes off and you wake up, you're out of it for a minute. You may hit the alarm, but I mean, you're just mm-hmm. discombobulated for like a minute or so, maybe two minutes, and you get up and get along with your day. But I think the death process. We first come out of these bodies. It's a lot like that. We're discombobulated for a moment. Yeah, kind of shook a up a little bit. That mm-hmm. won't cross over because they were scared of the light. Number one, and they were so discombobulated from leaving their body that they couldn't understand. And it and that then that confusion went on for a while, long enough for them to miss the chance to go into the light. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that 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 that's something else. You know, that I think is worthy of thinking about. So. That's interesting. And, you know, one thing that we didn't talk about about Mel's Hole is that some of the tribal people that live there have seen a black light, like a strobe light, coming up out of the hole. And they've also seen UFO activity hovering over that hole. So that's interesting in itself. And just looking at the dynamic between ice is cold, and but when it came up, it was burning, that can show the duality where Jessica picked up on a lot of sinister action, where I picked up on a lot more you know, higher vibration, higher vibrational activity. So it's like, there's obviously some duality going on Mm -hmm. in this hole, especially if there's some black beam of light that's Mm -hmm. shooting out of it from time to time. And again, I think that ice is example of transporting uh, material from one dimension to another. And back again, in that case, you know, in this case, I was definitely picking up on biolocation too, whatever that is. And, uh, you know, switching dimensions and quantum physics, um, just CERN, you know, and, 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 you know, the man, you know, basically the, the Mandela effect and stuff like that. You know, the thing with CERN, okay, CERN got really popular because of John Teeter 
and the John Teeter story, which was not on our bell. <laughs> but in our website, everything he said that he said that CERN would inadvertently start time travel, discover time travel. So all these things have evolved around CERN, but CERN was by no means the first, as they called him when I was younger, cyclotron. They had one called the Cosmotron. It was, and it's been running, it was running since the 60s. Yeah. So I think it's more the point of when they're doing this, what exotic materials are they really finding and collecting that are just, you know, for yeah. minuscopic amount of time that aren't the hogs, bisons, these other things things that are super particles and stuff like that. I think that's what we really need to be aware of also, as opposed to them just inadvertently blowing up the earth or swallowing us with a black hole. I don't think they're quite powerful enough for that. Yeah. But, you know, but it's not, you know, it's food for thought if nothing else. I think there's some other things like the Anderson Institute that had put out for um, a patent for a real time generator, you know, time reactor. Yeah. And that would involve a quantum computer. If you know, somebody asked me, "Have you actually seen a quantum computer?" That's a couple of years ago, and you know, and I actually hadn't. I assumed it would look like a really compact, uh, you know. But the truth is, when you look at this thing, it looks like something that would, like the beam in the middle of the TARDIS on Doctor Who. It looks similar to that, the ones huh. that I saw. And I'm starting to see, looking at how those could interface with time technology, it is a bit terrifying and very yeah. real. It's not just woo-woo conspiracy stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. You know what I really want to know is why didn't anybody eat one of those lifesavers after he brought it back up out of the hole to see if they would get superpowers? <laughs> oh, I would not touch one with a 10 I can't remember. What was the condition of the life savers, uh, life savers when they brought them up? What was the condition? I think of it was the same. He was testing to see if they were wet. Because he was thinking that maybe there's water, you know, down in there. And I believe that they were the same consistency, like the sheet. Well, I guess he, he I don't think he went into detail about the lifesavers that I remember. That would be a cruel joke to play on somebody. Give him a mm -hmm. lifesaver. Hey, you guys want a lifesaver? <laughs> <laughs> and then you turn, check this out. Yeah. out. That is not something you want to give anybody there. No. So, yeah, so I think it's just, it's really interesting about all those dynamics in the area and how it's just playing itself, you know, out. And maybe we need to go do some, do some of our field research over in that area a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't want to get anywhere near this hole, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to stay far away from Mills Hole. Yeah, <laughs> I'll stick with my Bigfoot fellas out there and, you know, looking for Dog Man. I'd rather do that than go check out a hole in the middle of nowhere. It's just, it's like, like I said, I saw the sinister side of it and, uh, and there's something, and, and besides we wouldn't be able to get anywhere close to it anyways, even if we were to go out there, uh, it's gotta be highly guarded at this point and, uh, you know, covered up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Nonetheless. And yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, it's crazy, right? I mean, we're still talking about it today and this, this all came out back in the 1990s. So Still a mystery. I don't and know. It makes you wonder how many other ones are out there similar to this too, you know? Yeah. Well, if there's one down in Nevada and there's one in Washington, I mean, there's sinkholes everywhere, but you know, there's a difference between just a sinkhole and then this thing. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, isn't it, is it California? There's something in the middle of the water and it looks like a hole or a portal and the water just flows in it and people can swim up to the ledge of it. I don't know if you guys Oof. have seen that. Oh, like the, one of those blue holes? Well, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting phenomenon right there, just to get that close to it. You know, I know that there's always a lot of activity, too, where it comes to artesian wells and the water that's coming up. It's always yeah. um, very active there with different types of earth spirits and things of that nature. Something about mm -hmm. When the water flows up, the gravity, I don't know. It's interesting. You know, you wonder yeah, too I, because of the minerals. Jessica and I talked about that in one of mm -hmm. our shows about the minerals, and um, or she was yeah. talking about it in the Ormus, yeah. or really yeah. rearranged monoatomic elements, and how oh, that yeah. actually is a superconductor. That and was so in wonder, the mineral wells in Texas. Yeah, yeah. that's right. 
I was chiming in on your on your show. And yeah, I, I appreciated like, that. <laughs> that's fantastic. And that's what Jesus used. He called it mana and he was feeding it to people and it was enhancing their light body and strengthening, you know, making them a superconductor. So maybe these artesian wells with all those minerals, you know, you know mana, mana was that algae produced in that machine. What was oh, wow. It's a type of algae. Yeah. Wow. Um, they, they've even had people that have supposedly reconstructed a mana machine. The reason why I took interest in that is because one of those beings that actually presented itself to me um, physically was this uh, eight, about seven and a half, almost eight feet tall, but it had that reverse brain and it gave me a name. Most of these beings don't give a name in my mind and it was mana, but it was M-A-A-N-A. Ah. And not quite spelled the same, but it had me kind of interested in actually exploring all the names of mana and the different, uh, you know, definitions Very and stuff. Very interesting. You came across that algae, algae stuff, you know. I, like wound up yeah. I, I mm -hmm. found later that that being was connected, you know, because I wonder, like, some of these beings would be more present when I was younger, and then when I got older, they back off, and others would step forward all the way to where it started being non-physicals, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, like, what was that being's interest with the Earth Matrix? Why is it interacting with not just me, but why Earth? You know, and I started coming across this brain coral, which looks a lot like their brain shape, and then this coral bleaching. And, you know, I got to be honest, uh, just, just before I went to Australia, I was not that familiar with what coral bleaching was and what causes it. And then I found out, especially over there, that the Great Barrier Reef is dying from this bleaching. Yeah. And then that introduced me to something that's called super coral and how they're making super coral right now that is resistant to the bleaching. And they're trying to repopulate the, the barrier reef. Barrier reef. the reefs. Yeah, wow. so, that, so, that, so, that, so that's fascinating. So my perspective mm -hmm. is, first of all, mana species, if it's involved with the earth, is this a species from our past, a type of coral that became sentient and then went galactic? Or is it from our future, the super coral becomes sentient and goes galactic? Wow. So if these beings can bend the space-time continuum, all bets are off. Yeah. Man, wow. that's really that's, deep. That's really cool. That's really Man. deep. And that's that's fascinating. That's a whole nother show in itself. <laughs> it is. Yeah, not, yeah. 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 It's, just, it's weird. I, I try not to go too far off, but it's supposed to be talking about a hole in the ground. But <laughs> well, all this other stuff comes in. <laughs> it's so all connected. Now, I know Matt, Matthew Delph was asking if uh, they tested the radiation to that hole. I never saw that they did. did are you guys familiar if uh, they tested the radiation? I didn't, I didn't hear anything about radiation. And nothing on my data came up as radiation. Mine did. Um, I got did. radiation. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely did. Maybe that's why I was seeing more of a sinister side. Because uh, I, I absolutely picked up on radiation in there. But of course, every time, you know, with my paranormal field research teams, we find that there are spikes of radiation when something paranormal uh, manifests or something happens. So I would assume there's going to be radiation in there. Um, yeah, I, you know, I would definitely assume. Yeah. yeah. You know, the only thing I was thinking, Tony, you mentioned it is when the, um, they said that the the inside of the seal looked like it was burned from radiation. The, the sheep was the sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The sheep is inside of it. That's what I was thinking of. Hey, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Matt Delph. I like that guy. You know, remember it, when he did his presentation? He's the first person that would collaborate. What I said about the um, the witch, the witch knots, and the Sasquatch, the juvenile oh, Sasquatch. Yeah. Some That's people so got mad at me for that. I don't own horses, and he, he collaborated it, so I thought that was he did. Important. Yeah, that was important, you know. People yeah. don't want to know. About hey, if you if y'all want to look it up, they're gonna have to Google it. Okay, you're gonna have to Google. <laughs> no, it. We're not going. <laughs> we're not going there tonight. That's a, that's a whole other hole that we're not talking. We're about we're not talking about oh, that hole. We're we're talking about mills. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we have to go there. Song, then we're, they're going to get some jokes. Okay. So oh, everyone man. can use your imagination as to what we're talking about, but you can google that if you would like to know what that is. Or just so, go to my YouTube channel. It, it's on there. So the sauce okay. right. it's, it's a video and I, I erased all the hate comments, so it, it looks good. <laughs> I know. There's there's always there's always that duality. There's always a more sinister side to everything, including Mel's hole. So <laughs> You guys, we're we're at the very end of our of our show tonight. So 
first of all, I want to thank Barry and Tanya. I want to thank y'all so much for being here with me tonight. This has been a really fun and, uh, I appreciate it. I hope that everybody learned something tonight. I, I always learn something from these shows and, uh, and it's just been a pleasure having y'all here tonight. So thank y'all for coming on tonight. Yeah. yeah. Thank, We're, you for thank you both for looking at the target too. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. We had, we had to look into it, Barry. Uh, um, everything that you, you talk about and you have your YouTube channel and do your shows about, it's always mind blowing everything. So, you know, Thanks. Mel's hole just seemed like we had to look into that because it, Tumor seals, come on. We had to look into that. But um, yeah, but this has been awesome. So thank everybody in the chat tonight for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Tanya, where can everybody find you? Yeah, so you can uh, check out my podcast, the Existential Empath Podcast. Or if uh, you want to check out my website, it's www.thesoulcafe.org. <laughs> awesome. And you're going to be on my show on Sunday night on Spaced Out Radio. So you are my special guest. And, uh, and we're going to talk spiritual Sasquatch and all sorts of fun, you know, high vibrational stuff. We're going we're gonna to have a really great show. I can't wait. We're so. going to have a great show. I was just putting together my story and I it's fascinating that I'm literally calling it Sasquatch and Friends the summer of 2020 because it was oh, just nice. all of this paranormal crazy activity that um, when I moved out to the Pacific Northwest, all these crazy things that happen. So it'll, it's going to be a really fun time. So join it us. is. <laughs> Thank you. And Barry, where can people find you? I know you've got a, an amazing YouTube channel, Barry yeah, Littleton you, on YouTube. YouTube channel under Barry Littleton. I'm also on Patreon, uh, Barry Littleton. I have a website that is not very active, but it's got the links on it. BarryLittleton.com. All right. Well, this has been awesome, you guys. I hope that y'all will come back and join me again soon. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to remote view for next week, but it's going to be good. I can promise y'all that. It always is. Okay. So you guys have a great weekend. I If, if anybody's in Alabama this weekend, I have to say I'm, I'm not a part of that conference. However, I might make a special appearance tomorrow. So y'all come out and see me. Uh, you know, we got Tex, Rob and Jason from Texas Front Porch there. And uh, and my teammates are there. My One of the guys from my team, Trey Hudson, is going to be speaking. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I might be making an appearance tomorrow. So uh, come out and, and have some fun with us. OK, but Barry, Tanya, you guys have a great night. I hope everybody enjoyed Mel's Hole tonight. We will see you guys next time. Good night. Y'all have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.